Hello and welcome to Nintendo Nostalgia. I am your host, Ryan Black, and I am joined with my co-hosts, Joshua Taylor and Chris Warren, and we are back and we are playing with power. Guys, how are you doing this cold winter day? Cold. <laughs> Not doing Same. too bad. Our, thankfully, our power is still on. It's four degrees here in West Virginia currently, but, uh, you know, got the heat on, blankets and stuff, so we're fine as long as we don't have to step outside. Yeah, yeah. Stay away from that. It's uh, currently negative one here, um, and still winter warm winter storm warning. So uh, it's yeah, a little little chilly. Uh, it feels like I think it's like negative teens. A little cold snap. Yeah, it's not too bad here. So I really feel for you guys, and you know, hope everything goes smoothly for everyone. So my heart goes out to you. Um, I think it'll be okay. But um, yeah, over here, it's just gonna go down to like eight degrees, which is obviously still not comfortable, okay. but. You know, you guys are having it pretty rough out there. So really yeah. hoping for the best for you guys. Yeah. Awesome. I hope that everything goes well. I, Jacob couldn't make it tonight because uh, his power went out. Um, so he's without, you know, without heat during this time. So I definitely feel for him, too. And uh, just a sense of hurts for him and his family. I know what it's like to be yeah. without without heat. I was out, out of, without heat for about a month and uh, it was not fun. <laughs> Awful. Finally have heat going now, and uh, it's, it's good. Really good. So. Good. Glad that got fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Um, but yeah, outside of that, um, I think we're ready to get into what we are Radical Rexing about. All right. Uh, anyone want to start today? Right. I guess I'll go ahead and give it a go. <laughs> Josh, um, go for it. So yeah, obviously, um, it is almost Christmas, the day we were recording this. So it's always, um, I want to say, exciting. There's a lot going on with our family this year. So, you know, not to be a downer on that. But, um, you know, it's it's always nice to sort of see everybody. And, you know, even though I'm 33, sometimes I still get some good stuff. So that's always nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've just been trying to get in a little bit of gaming here and there, mostly Disney Dreamlight Valley more than anything. Um, three of us have been fighting over my Switch to, to jump into that. <laughs> sort of like Animal Crossing, sort of that same genre anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's been good. A nice distraction. And uh, yeah, that's about it, really. Good, good. All right. So I think Chris is not quite ready yet. He's still collecting his thoughts. So I'm going to go ahead and go with what I've been radicalizing about. <laughs> Um, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon still lately, uh, enjoying that. Um, they're, they're doing a, uh, a Deli Bird raid right now, or, uh, yeah, terrestrialized thing. I don't even know what to call it now. Um, but, uh, we're getting a lot of, uh, Terra Shards, uh, by doing that. And so it's been pretty fun. Um, playing a little bit of Splatoon, the new winter update dropped, um, with, with new items and things. Um, so I picked up a couple new Ana Anarchy, uh, outfits and, uh, been having a lot of fun uh, playing in Big Run, which was really cool to have. Um, you know, all the salmon salmonids come and attack the uh, the Wahoo World area. Um, but yeah, Is that it, still was, going uh, on? it was good. What's that? Is that part still going on? Uh, no, it was just for a weekend only. It, it basically it's the it. Salmon Runs version of the Splatfest, essentially. Ah, um, uh, darn it. But uh, there's another Splatfest coming up in early January. Um, I don't know if you saw that one, but I'm pretty excited oh, yeah. about that. Uh, spicy, sweet, and sour. Um, you know, what am I going to be? I don't know. Uh, definitely not spicy. So it'll be between sour and sweet. Uh, most likely sweet, though, um, just because my household is uh, sweet fiends. Uh, but I, I do I do enjoy myself a, a good sour IPA. But uh, <laughs> I think the sweet's probably where it's going to be. I think it'll be um, Team Sour. <laughs> I think we're going spicy choice. here. Hmm. Uh, let's see if there's anything else going on. Uh, I took I took um, advantage of the 12 games of Christmas that No Gravity Games was doing, and so I got a bunch of yeah. free games uh, for every every day. They put out a new free game, and uh, that was fun. I was uh, doing that for Draco and I. Uh, we were trying to stay warm, just hanging out in one room with the heater on, and all the. The, the pets and just uh it was kind of cool mm -hmm. to hop on the e-shop and grab some free games um each day and and uh you know to game together and it was just it was a really fun time definitely radical rexing about just you know it, it sucks that we didn't have heat but also like 
you know, we, we are forced to be in a room together and, and be with all of our pets and, and play games and stuff. And, and I go out and dress up really warm in our own house, which is, and to, to do like little projects and things. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot. We had to, you know, run the water, uh, to keep the pipes from freezing. So, uh, it was, it was, it was a cool time despite not being able to really use our house much. <laughs> but, uh, so Chris, that brings us to you. Uh, what have you been radical accent about? Um, I mean, there's, it's been a really crazy time of the month, but, um, games wise, um, I've been really into the Mario Kart 8 DLC. Um, I'm really impressed with like that Christmas stage. I think that's really cool. Um, it's definitely a lot better than at least the first wave. I think that they're getting a little bit better with each release. So, um, this is a really good, um, collection of tracks. I really like them. So just do that every once in a while. And, um, I got, I kind of mentioned this before, but I got the Serious Sam collection. Um, it's like the physical copy from Special Reserve games, which make really good um, physical copies. So it's like, I don't know, four or so of these games. And I always wanted Serious Sam 2 on GameCube. So it's really nice to finally have that and have the option to play it portably. It plays really well. Uh, very fun, silly game. And I also got Cuphead, finally, the... Um, physical version of that which like I kind of assumed it was never going to come because it, it just kept getting delayed so um, now that the, the DLC for that came out it's on a physical cart and I have it and it is stunning I can't believe this type of Microsoft property is on the Switch it's just so weird but I'm really excited to kind of show my niece it I just I'm really curious to see how she'll respond to the animation and um, find it interesting. I doubt she'll get very far in it because I can't even beat the first level so far, but um, I really do uh, like the game a lot, and um, I think I'm going to commit to it and try to beat it. So, yeah, really excited for it. Awesome. Well, that brings to the end of this section. Um, so today's topic, uh, we're going to be talking about the Christmas holidays and also the end of year is going to be our, our wrap-up. It's going to be like our, our usual Christmas episode, but also our... our um, a recap of the year and um, what we look forward to going on into uh, 2023. Uh, it's been a crazy year. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it, guys. Not all in the same year to be released, but definitely to hear about, to look into. 
And uh, with the movie, Mario movie, and the rumored Donkey Kong movie after that, I feel like things are going to start connecting with when Nintendo releases media-wise. But with that said, again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you all. We love and appreciate you all. Thank you for sticking with us through when we used to deliver content every single week and to where it's been every other week or every couple of weeks. We truly love and appreciate you and hope to continue to make this show better, keep growing, and um, hopefully get back to a point to where content is almost every day or every week for you guys. So you guys have a blessed one. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. So this is going to be a, a fun romp through the year that has been 2022. Um, and uh, we're going to kind of bring forward our like recommendations for this year. Um, what, what kind of games that you would definitely say, Hey, y'all need to play this, you know, around Christmas or in the new year. Um, just kind of the must get games, if you will. Um, doesn't have to be something that came out this year. Maybe something that you, you've been sitting on for a while or been waiting for it to come in for limited run games for a little longer than you uh, would have hoped. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into that. Um, to kick us off, uh, Chris, why don't you bring the first uh, first recommendation that you've got for us? Sure. So um, I went away on a little vacation to Pittsburgh a few weeks ago. And I wanted something that I could play, you know, while I was back at the hotel, nothing too crazy, something chill and interesting and kooky. And um, I'm really glad that I brought Donut County with me. Uh, Are you guys familiar with Donut County? I've heard about it, but I don't know much about it. Okay. What about you, Josh? Uh, Same here. I've, I've heard about it, but I've never touched it. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I think I got this physical cartridge from I am 8-Bit, another great manufacturer of these types of games, but, um, it's a big time, like hipster game. Um, and I believe it's, I, I think it started on iPad and iPhone and kind of made its way to switch like one of those. Um, I want to see it might be Annapurna as well. If you guys know Annapurna, they make very cool artsy games. Um, Kind of hard to describe, but it's just like a very silly game where you kind of control a hole in the ground and you want to like suck up, not suck up, but have all the items above you fall into the hole and then the hole gets bigger, um, the better that you do. And it's just a really weird, silly story, but the music is really awesome. So if you're into like lo-fi beats and stuff like that, it's a great, great game. So um, if you're looking for something casual, something that won't take too long and um, just something different. Um, I highly recommend Donut County. It's a very, very fun game. I think you could beat it in like six or seven hours. And uh, it's just a really interesting experience. That's great to play like in bed while you're trying to relax. So that is my first pick. Donut County. I think I remember hearing about Donut County around the time that, um, Firewatch was a thing. I don't know why those two like pop in my head at the same time, but those those both stick in my head um, when I hear that. So, um, Josh, yeah, did you heard uh, of Donut maybe County? Maybe they came out around. Maybe they came out around the same time, but I think they were just really weird and different, and yeah. uh, maybe just in a lot of the Game of the Year nominations for that reason, just because they were just so uh, unique. Um, but anyway, sorry. Indie rep definitely is great. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Josh, what's your first pick? Hmm. So I'm trying to avoid like some of the obvious ones right now. I was going to say for, for like an indie side of things, um, I really did enjoy that little Gator game. Um, granted, I did do a quick episode on that last week, so I don't really want to hang on that one. Um, but th- that's also a very chill indie game. Um, there's been a few have kind of that's sort of come and went. Oh my gosh, I can't think of the name of it now. I'm blanking on it. Um, there is another indie that we recently got, if I can find the name. I, I, I played it a good bit, and I always forget. Well, I'll look that one up in a minute. Until then, if you haven't, um, of course, played it, one of our favorite games this year uh, was Kirby and the Forgotten Land. And I know that's probably a larger one that a lot of people have played, but there's probably a handful that haven't yet still. Um if you like Kirby or if you're just more of a 3D platformer kind of person, I think you should give it a go. Um, to me, a lot of uh, a lot of the Kirby really pieces have been just kind of like somewhere in the middle on and off. Um, I, I like the series, but, you know, they're not like the most exciting usually. But this one I feel like was stepping into something completely new for it. Um, especially if you like like Mario 3D World. 
I think it sort of fits that same genre uh, along those lines a lot. Actually, some ways I like this almost better. Um, granted, I did have a really good experience with this myself, with my daughter and everything, so that added to it a lot. But, yeah, I'd, there's not much else to be said about it other than just it's a really solid game, and it's got a good healthy length, length to it. It's not, you know, it doesn't go overboard. So, yeah, that one would be my first one. Excellent. Excellent pick. Um, that's some, a game that I still need to play. Um, but rolling right into that, rolling being the pun, um, I, I think that my game, my first game recommendation of the year is actually also a Kirby game on the Switch um, that came out. Um, I, was, I was peer pressured into buying this game uh, by the NOS crew. Um, you know, and I was like, you know what, whatever, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try it out. And I ended up absolutely loving it. Like, it's so charming just to pick up and play game. Um, it, it's kind of like online competitive, um, but you're basically just like racing down the hill, uh, to get to the end and, and eat all these strawberries. Uh, but that game is Kirby's dream buffet. Um, you can put on different like skins for Kirby and dress up Kirby and, uh, just kind of like bounce around and like you just get bigger and fatter the further you go. And this is race to the end um there's different like mini games and stuff so you can use like special abilities to knock your opponents out and slow them down um and uh there's like different game modes um that you kind of just do this this triathlon if you will of of uh, events to uh, uh two of them consistent races of course and then um there, there's some fun fun experiences to be had online um and if you do local co-op i believe two players can play um so you're not just like it's an online only game and you're never going to be able to play it again. Like you could actually play it with two players. Yeah. Um, it would be kind of cool if they did introduce like a, a two player link up to another system or maybe even four players on one system uh, update yeah. towards the end of its life when, when the online feature is no longer a thing, but uh, definitely a game that I'd recommend picking up this year and trying out. Yeah. It, if I may jump in on that one, um, I, I played it a good bit at first, and then my daughter was, was playing it on and off like constantly. Like we're at over level 100, we played it so much, and that's mostly offline. Like that's just you know one on one versus two computers. Um, and then we've gotten a lot of time out of that. It, it, I think it was like 15 bucks, so we've definitely got our money's worth out of that one. So our next pick. Uh, let's move on to our next round. Um, Chris, you want to kick us off? Sure. Um, I guess for my next pick is something that I played. I don't know, about two months ago, I'm still just really surprised by it. I keep jumping back to it every once in a while. Um, so this is Fast RMX. Uh, this is a game released by, oh man, Shinnen Jump or Shinnen or something like that. Um, I think one of those might be an anime. Uh, Shinnen <laughs> but, Media, I think. Shinnen Media, yeah, so Shinnen something. Um, it's a very, very, very impressive uh, F-Zero clone. And I have to say, it looks stunning. I was not expecting this game to look nearly as good as it does. And kind of like F-Zero does, um, has a lot of like interesting things happening in the background all around you. And there's a lot of variety to the tracks, like also similar to F-Zero, where you can uh, drive around like one of those tubular type tracks. Um, I kind of even prefer to F-Zero in a way because I just think the mechanic of changing the colors so that like your ship matches the ones that the pads are. I just think that's so interesting and engaging and it just seems more, I don't know, it, it's, it's more fun to me than the intense hardness and difficulty of um, F-Zero. So um, yeah, really, really impressed by Fast RMX and the amount of quality that's in it is uh, mind-blowing and i kind of wish that more people were aware of this game i know it's you know a more higher profile indie game but at the same time not not enough people know about it for how good it is um lots of uh, uh ships that you can play as lots of tracks so really impressive package and especially for the amount of money that you pay for it definitely recommend it and fantastic music also if you like electronic music so did fast you say, RMX. Mm -hmm. Did you say around when that released? I think that came out like right when the Switch came out. It was one of the launch games. It's just I just got it recently because um, they just released the physical version of it from Super Rare Games. So uh, yeah, I got that just a few months ago. But um, yeah, really fantastic racing game. Cool. I'm not a big mm -hmm. F Zero fan, but I have been curious about that one because I did like the. Um, 
the extreme G racing and, and things like that. And is it is yes. anything like that? Um, I wouldn't really say that. It has some similarities, but it's mm -hmm. definitely a lot like F Zero, except you just match the colors. Unless I'm forgetting um, uh, the extreme G. I played F Extreme G three and Extreme G R A, like Racing Association, the sequel mm -hmm. on GameCube, and I mean it. I feel like that's just really a lot like F Zero, right? Just with bikes. I don't know what the gameplay mechanic was. I think the only thing that, that really like stuck out to me at those games was like when you got to a certain speed, like the sound would kind of cut out, like you're were, you're were going like beyond the sound barrier, and so that was kind of yeah. something I really enjoyed. Um, I wasn't sure if the the fast RMX had that, but it sounds like it's 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 right in line with that that F Zero. Yeah. For sure. Like, it, I mean, when you do get a boost, it does that, but it's not like cool. a constant thing. But um, uh -huh. yeah, it's I, I'm just really impressed by the graphics. Awesome. So, yeah, definitely cool. check it out. All right, Josh, what you brought to what have you brought to the table this round? All right. So the next one I got is another one of my favorites actually this year, um, and that would be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Shredder's Revenge. Um, I'm not sure if both of you all played it or not. Uh, if, if you like beat 'em ups I definitely would recommend it. Um, of course, if you played any of the old ones, um, I think it picks up from that very well. I, I might even like this one better than than any of the older games, um, just just by hair, um, even more than like Turtles in Time and 3 and things like that. But I, I've gotten a lot of play out of it. I see myself going back to it every once in a while. Recently, it got an update, I think, yesterday, at least from when we're recording this. Um, to like add new custom modes into arcade where you can pick the same characters, you can change how the specials are handled, um, all kinds of stuff like that. So um, for it being what it is, it's not like super long or anything. So I, I wish there was maybe just a little bit more to do in there, but what's there is like really, really good. Um, all the characters feel unique and they're all pretty, mostly pretty fun to play as. Um, the music is amazing. Um, especially as goofy as it is having a Wu-Tang song in there. Um, that one against Shredder is, is kind of awesome. Um, Such a great yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. And, and the difficulty, too, there's different difficulty options and things, especially with the the new custom things you can add to it now. Because um, it, it can get pretty stinking hard at times. Um, but if you kind of go in and play it on easy and in story and things like that, just about anybody could really enjoy it. Um, especially with a partner that knows what they're doing to some extent. Um, yeah, that's definitely got my recommendation. Oh, real quick, before I do forget, and we can talk about that one, I did want to mention that Andy I mentioned was talking about earlier was Lunistis. Sort of looks like a Sega Saturn PS1 sort of game. It's like five bucks. Just a little small recommendation there. Anyway, go on. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was really surprised by the difficulty of Shredder's Revenge. I think I did like normal difficulty with my friend, and yeah. that was really rough. So, as embarrassing as it is to do a game on easy, that was like the perfect difficulty yeah. for us, um, and made it a, a much more you know pleasurable, ex <laughs> a, a better experience um, <laughs> using that uh, difficulty mode. Um, yeah, very impressed by like the animation, the music. Um, the variety of the levels really awesome uh, my picks a bit loki um you got to be in the mood for this kind of game um so it's um it's a board game so it, it's it's a game it's kind of a board game slash card game called a wingspan um and this sounds really weird but it's amazing how much fun that you can have with a game that's all about bird watching <laughs> Um, they put a lot of care into this game. If you've played the physical game, um, it's it's quite addictive gameplay. Um, and that's true to form when it brings it over to the Switch. Um, and not only do they bring that to the Switch um, in the actual card game, but they put a lot more effort into it um, with voice acting and bird acting, if you will, um, where anytime you play a bird, it's going to make their bird call sounds. And there's there's more than just one track. So you'll hear different like different calls, you know, different feels, um, on different situations when you play those birds. So you're not going to get the same one every time. Like maybe there's like two or three that it would play if you play that bird. Um, and so it's, it's pretty true to that. And then you can also still have all the features of the cards where you can see what region they're from and special, like, like, I guess blurbs about or facts about those birds. 
Um, and then there's a narrator in the game that's got like an accent and he reads it to you like they're like on a bird safari or something. It's, it's, it's really cool. Uh, it's really charming, really well put together package. Um, and they just released, uh, or at least they're either they're releasing or they've just released a new expansion for it for Oceana, which is, you know, Australia, Kookaburra, stuff like that. Um, but, uh, you know, just, I definitely recommend picking up the expansion, the games and the expansions, and just if you can get them on a bundle or something, it's definitely a game that's worth playing. It's a lot of fun with friends and family. You can play online. You can play locally. Um, we, we played, uh, it was me, Jacob, and Jesse, I believe, played Wingspan together, uh, one of our get-togethers. And uh, Jacob was a little bored, but uh, he sat through it and got through it and did a pretty good job with that. So, uh, But Jesse absolutely loved it and picked up that one. And, uh, we've just been having a lot of fun with it. So definitely recommend that for this year. Cool. I don't know that one. I'm pretty sure many other people don't know that either. So it's a, it's a good, unique pick. I like that. All right. We're on our third round. Uh, Josh, why don't you start us out this time? Well, depending on how many rounds we got, there's a couple more I have to talk about. Mm-hmm. But And I'm going to sound total like a mainstream person here. Y'all, I guess y'all can bring the interesting ones this time because I'm just going with what everybody knows about. <laughs> but I'm going to have to say Sonic Frontiers. Um, and I did play the Switch version. So that would, it's probably the most inferior version, so to speak, that is out there. But I still very much loved it. Um, and I, I went ahead and brought this up anyway, even with it being as well-known as it is, just because I feel like the series has not been in the best light on and off through the years. But I feel like this one really, I, f- I feel like they're really onto something. It, it's not perfect, um, but I feel like they've got a good base finally again. And it, it's been a while since I've felt that way. Um, since probably the whole boost era started, um, I've held on as a fan, but it's just not been my favorite decade or so of it. Um, so, and that, that's still somewhat there, but it's it's definitely got a different feel, especially the open world, uh, open zone, as they say, parts of it. Um, the, the music is really, really good. Um, some of the, every boss fight for each area is like, almost feels like a final boss fight. And you got to look up the soundtrack for those. Like it's, it's kind of ridiculous, but it's like epic. (laughs) All of them just impressed me. Um, so it was a lot of fun. I'm a big fan of the adventure games one and two. And I, I finally felt, um, like the 3D games were, were sort of where I almost would imagine them to be at this point. Um, it, it definitely has some room to grow, and I, but I, I really feel like they've got a decent base here. If they just stick the course, you know, fix a few things here and there, um, maybe even keep it in the oven a little bit longer, you know, um, and, and I, think it, I think they could really be onto something good this time. Um, it's been a good year for that uh, franchise, I guess, as a whole with the movies and everything anyhow, I think. So it, it, it was refreshing, yeah, no. but it was refreshing um, to see something from that actually be mostly successful. Yeah, I'm really surprised by the reception of Sonic Frontiers. It's like, it's so interesting because it has like just okay reviews, but everyone still says that they love it. It's just like a, some of the weird quirks and, and perhaps glitches and stuff that they find in the game. But it's pretty cool that like, they are both experimenting, but going back to what people really love, like like you mentioned, the adventure games. I love Sonic Adventure, too, so it's cool that they brought back a lot of that while still bringing in something totally new that makes sense for this series, this open-world, um, uh, I don't know, layout, because, you know, what can you really do with a character that moves so fast? Well, give them a lot of space, so hopefully they explore that a lot more and um, kind of refine what works and take out what <laughs> seems to be bizarre, <laughs> like fishing, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yes, it's a very interesting release. So I'm curious to see uh, where it will take the franchise moving forward. Uh, I almost hate saying this um, and speaking it into uh, being, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if um, they take this sonic idea you know the big open space and just do like a sonic 99 where everybody's trying to race the end so it's basically like kirby you know like like kirby's dream buffet like we were talking about like sonic with like you know trying to knock people off try to get to the goal at the end like that would be such chaos but that would be kind of a fun you know side game or something they could do Uh, and it's right in line with the racing games for sonic maybe make that a little something in there Uh, or maybe another game 
it's kind of a fusion of Sonic R and, you know, all of the others that, um, that they've brought this, that transformed and stuff like that. Like it'd be kind of a cool thing to do that, but, but also just bring it back to the 3d roots. Um, I should I say roots it sounds weird because, you know, the roots are really <laughs> 2d, but you know, uh, there's some, some 3d roots there. Um, so, um, now when you say that there's boss battles, like they're each of the boss battles. So are we talking like, you know, final boss fight for Sonic adventure two battle, but like every boss fight is kind of that like in different like phases and stuff like that. Pretty much. You, you could almost say that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in, in, in some ways, depends on the boss. Some of them was a little more forgettable than others, but for the most yeah. part, like it was, it was pretty solid. I, I, it was, it was almost an, a surprise to go into like the first boss and be like, "Whoa, this, this isn't the end, is it?" Like it, it was, it was pretty cool. Awesome. You got to play it with the volume up really high too. <laughs> I'll try to do that. <laughs> I like your idea, Ryan, that you mentioned before. I, and honestly, like, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened because Sega doesn't say no to anything involving <laughs> Sonic. So it's just a matter of time at this point. I like the Chow Garden that still still is missing in action. Anyway. Rest in peace. Yeah, weird I'll get off on a rant never, on that one. They never return to that. And, like, people love know. it, clearly. So what's they that could about? They so much with it. They could even, yeah. like, tie it to your cell phone or something at this point. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I think they'll do something at some point, but Surely. who knows when? Yeah, twenty years later. <laughs> Anywho, all right. So my next pick um, is going to be um, a game that I've talked about on the show before. Um, it's definitely nostalgia uh, based. Um, I want to say it's more PlayStation nostalgia, um, but there's a couple of like I, I guess. Well, I guess there's also an Nintendo nostalgia there as well. Um, but that is the uh, Klonoa collection. Um, it's the Fantasy Reverie series. Um, it's got Klonoa 1 and Klonoa 2 on it. And uh, it's just charming to return to that world and experience that. Um, it's got some kind of dark themes with a, with a sweet, cute overtone. or you know, So it's, it's very much Kirby style in that respect. Um, or like, you know, cutesy and fun and the the enemies aren't that scary or anything like that. Um, but then like things kind of ratchet up and things, it, it deals with some, some real things. Um, so you might, if, if you have kids or something, you might want to, you might have to talk a little bit about, um, you know, losing loved ones and things like that. Um, if, if that comes to it, because there are some dark, dark elements there. Um, but that's just kind of the warning I have for like showing that to kids, but it's a really fun game. Um, it does get kind of difficult. Um, but especially if you're trying to collect everything, um, which I'm still trying to do, um, playing through the first one, trying to collect all the items, um, and then moving on to the second one. But I definitely recommend that, that series in general. Um, it's, it's really fun platformer, um, despite it's cute, uh, cutesiness. Um, it definitely has that Kirby feel to it and, uh, it's, it's really good. So I definitely recommend that one. Um, my third one is going to be What the Golf. Have you guys heard of What the Golf? I have heard oh, of no. it. No. Is it anything like Golf Story? Um, I don't think so. No. I haven't played Golf Story, but from what I know, no. Um, <clears throat> it's more, it's very arcadey. There's no story. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But um, it's really cool because it's like very simple golf mechanics, but they give you a whole bunch of different stages that you, like have different themes. So like you'll play a soccer stage, but with golf mechanics, or you'll play a mini level based on Flappy Bird, but with golf mechanics. Um, so it's, just, it's very funny, silly. Um, it's, it's super arcadey and casual, uh, great music. It might, it's, it might even be Annapurna, I'm not sure, but... Um, it's along those lines, and uh, yeah, uh, it's just good, silly, dumb fun. Uh, so yeah, definitely check out what the golf. <laughs> it does look really neat. I've never played it, but it, it does look fun. Um, golf. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's comparable again. Golf Story does some similar things where it sort of uses the golf mechanics to do different little like goofy things sometimes, um, or little mini games oh, okay. and things like that. So it's probably not exactly the same thing, but it. Uh, I kind of get what you're saying. Which is a, a really interesting way yeah. to do that. Pick those known mechanics and, and play with it like that. Yeah, exactly. And it's very approachable. Like, you don't have to, you know, I don't care for golf whatsoever, but, um, yeah. you know, I, it, the, the arcade element of it is right. very approachable for anyone, even little kids. So, um, yeah. yeah. Were you going to say something, Ryan? I was just wondering if it had some kind of like multiplayer element or something you could play with friends or if it was just kind of a single player, like just sandbox. 
I forget if there is multiplayer because like when I played it with a friend we were kind of like just tra- uh, passing the controller like mm-hmm. back and forth sharing the joke um, so yeah exactly so I it could it could but um, it is really fun to play with another person because there's lots of surprises I don't want to give anything away um, but along the lines of Flappy Bird there's courses designed on things that a lot of us know about and it's just uh, yeah it's just fun to see what kind of surprises are in store in this game so highly recommended very cool um Mm -hmm. so uh, when i think of golf like for some reason like you know you say donut county i think like donut you said like donut holes and then like a hole in one and and golf and stuff. i've seen a lot of indie games going to that that side of things um, and, and what the golf, it, I'm guessing you do more than, I, if I remember seeing previews or like Indie Direct or something where they were like hitting random things, not just golf balls. Um, mm, and like, mm-hmm. there's some, some interesting like, like twists on how you would play things and uh, it kind of challenges the way you think about, about things, but with, with a golf setting um, and, and sounds exactly. like things get pretty, pretty uh, haywire and fun. Um, so yes. It sounds pretty charming. Um, and yeah. You know, was was it a pretty good soundtrack to boot, or was that kind of like the take the the side stage? You're just playing the fun, the fun like mechanics and things. I believe the soundtrack is very similarly good, like um, like Donut County. Donut County is just better in general, I think. But yeah, yeah, the music's good. Yeah, it's not like the main reason why you would play, but it it is it, it supplements the fun of the game very well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as long as something like that is just supposed to be pure fun, isn't like have distracting music, like I think it's gonna sell pretty well or go oh, pretty yeah. well for that. So it sounds like you had a pretty good experience with that um, yeah. overall. I think it's just like lo fi beats, similar to you know a lot of other indie casual games. Yeah, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, we've got our final round coming in. Uh, sorry for cutting you off earlier, Chris. Uh, that's what I get for not having starting with you. That was the normal way of going with things. That's okay. So, um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do then is I'm going to bring my uh, my pick to the table and then um, have you two guys go next. Um, I'll have Josh wrap us up for that one. Um, but I just want to wanted to just say like there's there's a lot of games that I played this this year that I went back and played because you know they were popular at the time. Um, you know I, I played the Portal games which were pretty fun. So I don't want to discount those. Um, and um, Jacob and I kind of played them together, not actually like in person. We didn't really converse with each other, but we got to talk a little bit, you know, as we were playing. We're kind of on the same t- same timeline when we were playing through the games and uh, enjoying them. And uh, so it was, it was kind of cool to experience that, you know, you, you don't want to miss out. Like if you're missing out when you play like new games, you know, all the conversation. But it was really cool to have one close friend that ha- was part of the conversation with me for those games. Um, we have still have gotten together and played the two player mode there. But um, but that's just kind of an honorable mention, really. Um my my next pick is is kind of cheating. Um, it's it's two games really, um, but they're they're similar in how they how they present the experience. Um, just uh, one's past, one's future, and that's uh, Pokemon this year. Um, they've done a really good job with um, with Legends Arceus and going into the past and learning the history of of the game, of the Pokemon world, um, and especially in that region, the history region, and uh, having some new Pokemon and seeing some Pokemon how they were back then and how Pokeballs were reused back then when everything was starting out and everything was wild and they had to like you know people were afraid of Pokemon because you know they're dangerous. Um, and then, like the, the the concept of training Pokemon and and Pokemon battling and things like that um, were being discovered, and that was a really cool experience. And then fast forward to the future, uh, you know, pun intended, with my version Violet um, is you know the new Pokemon games that came out, uh, you know, Violet and Scarlet. Um, both of those uh, games are phenomenal games with story, um, but they they kind of take a lot of those elements from Arceus and uh, and and put that into their open world theming. Um, and, and both of those experiences together, um, if you, you view them as a package, um, they're both pretty meaty games, um, but definitely like experience those, uh, one or the other and, um, and, and kind of get, get into that. Like you, you can even get into the story and the history of the games in Violet and, and Scarlet with the classes you can take. Um, you can learn the history of the region. And, and so like, you know, the, the, there's some of those common elements of just learning lore. And I really love the story and the lore of the Pokemon world. And so getting into those um, with, with these two games, two mini games uh, was, was phenomenal. And, and I think it's, especially if you're a Pokemon fan, definitely check it out. If you're, if you've been away from Pokemon for a while, um, I recommend trying out Arceus, especially if you're tired of the Pokemon formula, because it's different. 
Um, and then if, if you want something that is a lot like Sword and Shield or uh, something that is um, just a bigger, grander feel, I would definitely go um, with, you know, the, the Violet and Scarlet because those are the hottest things right now. But um, it, it's fun to play with friends and be able to just link up. And that's one thing that, you know, Arceus is a single player experience, whereas with uh, Violet and Scarlet, you can get together with friends and just seamlessly link up and hang out in each other's world. And uh, explore and catch Pokemon together and do raids. And it's it's just, it's a fun, like, accessible feeling. And it's definitely a step towards MMO. And both of those games are showcases to what this franchise is headed towards, um, despite all of their flaws in different ways. Um, it's really cool to see, you know, the future of Pokemon start to blossom here um, as they're taking these steps towards, hopefully, MMO. But, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of, like, the open world is starting to become a thing. So massive multiplayer and an open world and, and things are starting to come into the conversation with Pokemon. Um, if if they've, they're they given enough time to actually, you know, develop and, and get those things out at, at a you know, good steady pace, um, but not have to do crunch and stuff like that. So I think that um, there's a lot of promise in this series. And I think 2022 was a great time for these to come into their own, honestly. Um, so I uh, just kind of my recommendation is experience one, if not both of those, uh, those experiences, because they were, they were uh, captivating. Um, you know, one was when I was in have, going through COVID. And so I got to play Arceus during that time. That was really cool. And then, you know, the other one was, you know, definitely recovered after that, but I got to play a lot with uh, my spouse and uh, it was, it was a good time. So, all right. Uh, it's very weird that they released like technically three Pokemon games this same year. Yeah, uh, very bizarre. But um, <laughs> I am like kind of t- like I'm on the outside of Pokemon lately. Like I haven't yeah. played them many many years. But it is really cool to see them really start to um, fulfill the potential that the series has in like a 3D space. Um, I I think their designs are getting a little bit better again. Um, I mean, maybe they were always good, but I, I like the direction that they're going with this current generation. But, um, you know, the open world nature and um, the, you know, the the themes of the future and the past in, in one same um, collection, I think that's really interesting. And, and um, I'm glad that they're being ambitious. It's just that I hope that they can start to be as ambitious as the system and their abilities allow them to be because they're being a little too ambitious for what is, you know, what the system's capable of or what their designers are capable of creating. So um, I'm sure they'll keep that in mind for the next one, but um, we're, we're getting closer to that, you know, uh, destiny that we were kind of uh, promised or hoping for when the games originally uh, released so it, it's really cool that we're getting really really close to like our ultimate dream of pokemon so uh, a very very interesting and cool release so um i know there's a lot of problems with it but i i'm happy for the people who are playing it and enjoying like the substance of the game so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and then pass this on to chris uh what is your last pick uh, my last pick is, interestingly enough, it's a port of a Wii game that I was a huge fan of, but many people have never played or even know about it. Um, it's called The Blob. Are you guys familiar with The Blob? Yeah? Okay. Um, um, is there a boy in his blob mm-hmm. or uh, just The Blob? Nope. The Blob. It's D-E the Blob. Mm-hmm. Nope. No, okay. Okay, no, totally I'm not the opposite really. of horror. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so it's like you play as this, like, I don't know, blobby guy, I guess. And um, it's very cute. It's like you play in this world that lacks color. Um, I guess, like, the enemies took all the color out or something. And so it's your job to go around, get these little paint creatures, and, like, like, touch them, turn into that color. And then each, like, surface that you touch brings more color to the world and you want to use like a variety of color obviously and the more that you do the more it brings up the world obviously and it's cool because each color is associated with a different instrument so like red is like a saxophone sound and each time you touch a surface it has like a little saxophone riff that it plays and um there's lots of different um there's a lot of variety to the tasks that you uh play so there's like racing parts there's um 
uh, like timed sequences where you have to like paint a certain amount of buildings in a certain amount of time um, or you defeat an enemy in a certain amount of time. So there's lots of different objectives and it's just a really excellent and chill three platformer. Um, and it's great on Switch because on the Wii, my frustration was that you had to jump using Waggle and it was really imprecise and annoying. So now it's just the A button, like okay. all platformers should be. So um, yeah, it's just like a really cool, awesome soundtrack. The more you, um, the more you paint the world, the better the music gets, and it's just huh. a really rewarding experience. So, um, and I wanted to bring this one up because I gave it to my niece to play, and she's very new to video games. She actually has trouble in a two D space, but she had no problem at all playing this game, which is a three D game and moving the camera around and stuff like that. So if you have young ones, I highly recommend The Blob and its sequel. Cool. And how does that spell? Is mm -hmm. it is it D-E? Uh, D yeah, D-E space Blob. Okay, and there's cool. a sequel as well, The Blob 2. The Blob 2 is probably a little bit better. Well, that mm -hmm. brings us to our last, uh, our last entry uh, by Josh. Josh, what you got for us? Well, to kind of keep the pace here with the rest of my suggestions this year, I've sort of kept it almost like my favorite games of the year, I guess, for Switch. But um, I'm going to say the expected one, and I will keep it short. But Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've talked about it before. Um, if, you've, if you've been around me or seen me post and things like that, I've talked about it before. Um, so, yeah, I, you, it may look like there's a little bit of bias there for the various reasons, but... Uh, no, I, I really think if you played Kingdom Battle, I think there's a lot, uh, a lot of improvements here. Um, a lot more with the exploration. The battle system feels just different enough without like being alienating or, or being, you know, feeling like a completely different genre or anything like that. Um, I, I really like a lot of the upgrades they made. I do miss multiplayer. Um, so we'll, we'll see if that comes back or how that'll work play out eventually. There is a lot of DLC coming, so. Maybe it'll fall in somewhere there. Um, it's uh, it, it is on sale a lot, so that's easy because it's a new Ubisoft game. So a lot of times um, they do pretty good deals, so it's it's not too difficult to pick up um, compared to a lot of other games with Mario's name on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend that, even if you haven't really played Kingdom Battle. Um, I, I think this one's a little more accessible uh, than that one, and, and the story does kind of tie into it, but it's not like you're not going to be confused necessarily or anything if you just start with this one. So, I mean, it, again, yeah, so you can go off me being a little biased or whatever it may be. I, I do think this is actually a really good game that, that a lot more people should go check out. Um, so, yeah, that, that's I'm going to go ahead and stick to that as my last recommendation. And a good one at that. <sighs> Thanks, guys, for coming together and, uh, you know, just discussing what we've been doing this year. I know we haven't had a lot of time to podcast and, and you know, be there for our fans and just, just hang out even. Um, and it's really cool to, to be face to face with you guys. And, you know, the holidays are here and we're wrapping up the end of the year. And it feels pretty, pretty crazy, you know, that, you know, how long we've known each other and then how much time we got to spend with each other and how, like, we've been so distant this, this year um, with, with everything. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really cool to be able to get together with you guys and, and talk games again and just, you know, uh, just just have fun, you know, hang out. But uh, yeah. that does bring us to the end of the episode. Um, we uh, have some uh, some things we got to go do with our families. You know, Christmas is, is ever closer. So uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we will catch you all in the new year. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Happy New Year and happy holidays. See you soon. Later, Preston. <laughs>